It's Victoria from Tribal Room TV and I'm standing here with Suez, who just got recognized uh, by the World Economic Forum being chosen as the Young Global Leader. Yeah, right? it's Young Global Leader, yeah. yeah. So, uh, how does it come? What have you done to uh, become even the youngest of these? Young Global Leader, yeah. Um, I, I started my company at the age of 14 and now I'm 22 now and uh, so it's been, so it's almost been, uh, it's almost been the eight years since I've been into business, and yeah, it feels. Well, very you say it so easily, but uh, starting a business at 13, come on, <laughs> how does it come? Why do you are you so crazy to do that? Uh, in fact, I was very inspired when I started very young. Like I was very motivated by the success path of the founder of Microsoft, Mr. Bill Gates, and I wanted to start my own company. Uh -huh. So uh, the ultimate. How did you How did you hit up on that story? Uh, did you saw it on television or? I saw it on the internet and. Okay. Uh, and at the same time, I was really inspired by his success path and I always wanted to offer employment to these eligible unemployed youth all over the world. And I think I think offering employment to somebody else uh, was my ultimate motive when I started the company. Okay, so is it that cultural background from India uh, which also influenced you in that way? Yeah, of course. It is also the cultural background and it's also the support and, the, and my family's background and the values that my my family insisted on me. So. I think it really helped me to have such a vision. Yeah. So let's now uh, know uh, what you're really doing. No, at the moment uh, I'm starting my second company, and uh, which would also be in the Germany. Now uh, our our company now is focused on Web 2 Auto solutions. So we've been we've been building applications on on Web 2 Point platform, and at the same time we have our own in-house product called EducationERP.net, where we automate schools and education institutions. And uh, so it is the first ERP which is only focused for the which is focused on the education sector and 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 yeah it's quite been successful for us and uh, and in the pipeline we also have a few uh, uh, a few internet based ventures that would work with exhibitions that would and and we are also launching a social web based operating system very soon yeah. so you are quite hyperactive right <laughs> yeah of course right sure. Okay, founding uh, uh, own business uh, so young as you did, where does your knowledge come from? Uh, how do you did you know how to found a, a business? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I mean it was through my, uh, I mean it was through the experience of other successful entrepreneurs. So I always learned from the failures and mistakes of other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you use the internet to get uh, information about the other entrepreneurs. Or? Yes, it's through the internet. It's also through the books that they authored mm -hmm. by uh, themselves. Biographies. So, yeah. Okay. So I so I looked into the autobiographies of these entrepreneurs, and I think yeah, I mean it was an it was an instrument for me to see that okay, in case of I face a, I face a situation uh, similar to other entrepreneurs, I know how to handle it, and I felt mentally very strong. And uh, in my case, I hailed from a non-business family, so. So my family had no experience in running a business. Uh, yeah, it used to be initially hard, but yeah, finally I was able to manage. How did they deal with that? Did they uh, support you or? Uh yeah, of course they did not support me initially because they were very afraid of the fact that I will spoil my. I'll spoil I'm on my, a teenager. Yeah, so I'll spoil my school life or my academics. So they were quite skeptical of me starting a company initially. Okay. But yeah, so it went on and it was it was quite easy for me to start. Okay. And um, well, whichever kind of problems or challenges that you have to face being such a young entrepreneur? Uh, I, mean, I mean, sometimes I'm not, uh, whenever I attend some meetings or I attend CEO's, uh, CEO seminars, they feel that I'm impersonating someone else as CEO. They don't uh, accept me as, as, a, as a CEO of the company because they think that I'm too young to be a CEO. And at the same time, yeah, it's quite been hard for me to, uh, for me to like, I show myself that I'm the CEO of the company and, and the acceptability factor. Sometimes I was not allowed to sign on the agreements. When I started my company at the age of 14, I had few orders when I was like 17 years. And when I had to sign the agreement, they told you are too young to sign on an agreement paper. So we cannot, we cannot outsource the projects to you. So it was used to be hard initially. Yeah. And uh, the story is also that you had to move to the US to really yes, be uh, able to fund yeah. uh, the company, right? In India, you need to pay 18 years to start a company. So it is, uh, it is, one, of, it is one of the main reasons why we started it in the United States. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So you've seen a lot around the world already. Um, what has the most impressing uh, thing uh, during your yeah, entrepreneurial time? Uh, what, yeah, what experience was the most surprising one, maybe? Also? Uh, maybe, maybe one of the uh, one of the very interesting, uh, uh, or one of the very memorable moments of my of my entrepreneurial uh, story could be that. Uh, 
um the marketing strategy where we adopted and where we were able to scale up our uh, scale up our sales like uh, all those american c- companies which did not have a website we went out to them and and i opened up anonymous email accounts and i started to send them an email that okay um, I, i'm impressed to import your automobile spare part product but are you having a website on your own and things but they did not uh, uh so they responded indicating they did not have a website so uh, so i sent an email after a week indicating that if they need a website in my own name and yeah so it was the back to entry strategy which i did and uh, yeah it was quite successful for us to increase our sales so it was one of the unforgettable moments in my entrepreneurial journey <laughs> so that was also a big success factor right yes it was certainly a very big success factor okay, for us so would you also recommend for others to be here yeah, out of the way to be different to to try out new ways yeah of course as an entrepreneur uh, it's like an adventure so you certainly you cannot you cannot have this normal path so you you really should explore new paths you really should explore new strategies and at the same time the sustainability and the assertiveness should be there so when you start a company we have to make sure that uh, your company has a has a long vision it is able to sustain on its own and and it has a strong it has a strong business model in where they are able to monetize their uh, they should be able to monetize their ideas which is very important does it mean that you never got the help of business angels or vcs uh, in my case i did not have it's a self funded company fortunately but of course i think i think now at the moment uh, because for many of the ideas if if any entrepreneurs required they can certainly approach the they can certainly approach the business angels or the vcs and uh, yeah at the end of the day after this after set up any enterprise it like it i mean it really should have a strong business model where uh with ideas they should be able to monetize their ideas on on its own okay and uh beside that what our hint would you give for startups i would say them that never to accept no in their life so like irrespective of any obstacles or setbacks that they face they should be very focused so at the same time they should make sure that they focus the vision of their organization or their startup should never be misaligned and at the same time uh, i think they i mean as indicated in my life i never i never was able to accept if anybody says no to me i never could accept it so i think it should be the same attitude with other upcoming entrepreneurs as well Good. And last but not least, give us some funny story. Maybe that uh, professor story you mentioned in your yeah. talk. Uh, like a few months back, when I had a shortage of my attendance because I got into the World Economic Forum, I had a shortage of my attendance, and I was not allowed to write my examination in the university. So um, I had to meet my professor, and uh, so uh, my professor was was in his mid thirties, and he told, okay, he will he'll help me with my attendance, and he'll help me in sorting out the examination. But when I met him, he told that he wants to apply for a, he wants to apply for the job in my own company. So that's funny eh? your professor first stressing you out because you're not attending uh, correctly to the lessons and uh, when he comes up to you and asking for a job yeah of course it suddenly uh, was very surprising shocking for me and <laughs> and i think it is the last thing that you would expect where your own professors uh, apply apply for employment in your company it's so just compliment yeah. sure so uh, yeah i mean i didn't know i mean i didn't know how to react but i was able to manage somehow <laughs> So you're still working on your university degree? Yes, I mean at the moment uh, from the World Economic Forum I would be studying and I would be studying in the Harvard University for uh, for a special executive program there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've I've, uh, I've informally I've already opted out from my from my university because it used to be very hard for me to finish and and uh, like I had a shortage of attendance so it used to be very hard for me to manage between my academics and professional life. Did you also already write an autobiography? Uh I mean like I I think that we still have a we still have a very long way to go. I'm still 22 and I think when I'm in my 50s when I would have when our company would be like a still more larger I think I would yeah. I would be in a stage to write my own autobiography. Okay, so there's no other chance to learn about that guy than just watching that video of course and maybe uh, getting in touch with him through his email maybe. Sure. My email address is suhas at g l o b a l s i n c dot com. Okay, so thank you very much for Thanks your story. Thanks a lot. Story. Thank you. <laughs>